made things evolve for me was uh, Doug Petrie, who had grown up a comic fan, wanted to write a Buffy comic, so mm -hmm. he gets in touch with me. I think next I wound up dealing with Jane, and I loved working with these guys, and it was really easy, and I think they enjoyed doing it because the next thing I knew, Josh said he wanted to write a comic. And so working directly with Doug, I learned a lot about what Buffy's all about. Working directly with Jane, I got to really start to understand it. And then doing Frey with Joss, which was the first comic that he ever wrote, you know, the first published comic he ever wrote, um, I I really started understanding the shtick, you know, what what it's really all about. And since then, my whole concept of genre fiction is so defined by what Joss does. And all the writers have their unique take on it, very much informed by Joss. But they all have this amazing way of elevating genre fiction and making it be about you know something amazing, and and the trick the the trick to what I love about Buffy and about everything Joss does is the way that it's genre fiction that totally services the genre while being completely character driven, mm -hmm. and so much genre fiction is completely lacking in character. It's totally you know it, it's like these automatic stories where the writer comes up with some interesting problem. And then it's a math. It's just a math equation to solve the problem, generally by killing the bad thing. Yeah. And the and the characters never get touched by any of it. You know, so many mainstream comics, you read a Green Lantern story, and it was just a Batman story that the writer came up with, and he couldn't get it on a Batman book, so he said, "Well, I can just substitute Batman for Green Lantern, and mm -hmm. it's the same story." Mm -hmm. And the care, you know, and part of it is because the way that fiction is developed, you don't want to change the characters. The right. characters don't change, and any change is just immediately going to be reversed. You know, you got to get back to the lunchbox status quo. It's and really just all verse, chorus, verse, and once you're done, it's the song is over. And right, you and we're right it. back where we started. So, you know, so seeing how to do genre fiction where every aspect of the genre is really just in service to illuminating the character and testing the character. One of my favorite quotes from Joss is that he likes to cause his kids pain. And um, he's like, yeah, because that's how you test character. That's how you see what these people are all about and you expand on what they're all about and you, you come to you know, illuminate them as characters. And the whole gang just gets it and does it so well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, scripts come in from Buffy writers, whether it's Drew or Joss or Doug or any of them. Um, and there's, you know, there's a, there's such great things going on, you know, every time. Jane blows me away. Like the first issue for Jane's arc is done, the first, the script for the first issue. And it's amazing. It's I, I read it and I was like, this is like forty five pages of comics, right? I'm like, no, it's twenty two pages of comics. It all works gracefully, but somehow she just shook up everything we've done in the first twenty five issues and it's like we're we're starting fresh. Like this is it. We are totally in the home stretch now. Um the stakes are are, are raised to a point where uh every character is right out there in front of the bullets, you know, it's it's great. Like what Jane did in the first issue of her arc, and the fact that she has five issues to do it, whereas the longest arc so far has been four issues. What she's going to do over five issues is going to be amazing. I can't wait. Um, so yeah, I'm a big fan of all these guys, and certainly there's never been a script from Joss where I wasn't happy. Um, yeah, it's like I feel like I learn stuff every time. Um, shifting gears for a moment, I want to talk about a project you're doing, and that's Robert E. Howard's Solomon Kane, yeah. which to me has always been Kane, uh, Howard's most undeveloped character, but I really enjoy what you're doing with Thanks. this book. I mean, it's 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 difficult to explain to anyone who, who isn't reading it, but yeah. it's well worth the read, and it's not so dense that you can't get into it. Yeah. Yeah, well, one of the criticisms I always get about my work, and I don't, they're, they're always right. Everybody's always right when they say this. It's like, ah, crap. Um, from the first issue of Solomon Kane, people are like, yeah, I think this will read better as a trade paperback. And I so much write my stuff to be trade paperbacks. It's like I'm just writing parts of the eventual trade paperback. So the first issue kind of kind of started slow because it was just chapter one of a five-chapter story. Um, but yeah, they, they I feel like it, it starts a little slow. I think I've got a good balance of, of density. A lot of stuff happens. It, I think it's pretty twisty and turny. Um, but you know, with 
it's it's very informed mm -hmm. by the, the the two guys that I work with the most and who have the biggest influence over me are Joss and Mike Mignola. And their aesthetics are very different in a lot of ways. Um, Mike's stuff generally is is very lightly character driven. His characters don't change a lot. In a in a personality kind of way, they more like change from living to dead, back to living, to statues, to <laughs> blocks of wood. Um, but uh, but it, the way that he can develop a, a story about the supernatural is really an amazing thing, a unique thing in comics, and I think it's why he's risen to the level that he's risen, along with the fact that he can draw like he draws. Um, but I feel like in a lot of ways Solomon Kane is this nice middle ground between the very emotional character driven stuff that Joss does Solomon Kane's tricky if you know the character like he kind of doesn't seem to have any emotions he certainly doesn't think he has any emotions but one of the things I like about him is he has this very self-righteous temper mm -hmm. um, if anybody ever questions his virtue then he goes a little bit nuts um, but he you know he's a I consider Kane to be sort of an anti-hero a pretty crazy guy who um, thinks he's on the side of right, but doesn't really waste too much time thinking about what is right. 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 So, well, you're doing an excellent job with Thanks. it. And before we close, I just want to congratulate Dark Horse on Buffy winning the Diamond Gem Award. Oh, is that this? Did we? Did they announced it the other day. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah. See, you're winning so many. They just it's true. Yeah, like, like, yeah. So we keep getting these year-end lists mm -hmm. from '08. Um, you know, from like reading groups and library associations and stuff like that, they're like, oh yeah, season eight, season eight, Umbrella Academy, season eight. It's been, it's been amazing, it's been great keeping up with it. But yeah, Diamond Gem, do you know what it was for? It was for a specific issue, and I'm blanking on what it is yeah, now. That's so. cool. I'll find out. Cool, thank you, that's great. Well, thank you so much for doing this, I greatly appreciate it. Yeah, Enjoy the rest of the con. I will.